Welcome to MCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about undervolting, which basically is the secret mystic art of taking the components that you have, running them at exactly the speed that they are intended to be run at, and reducing the overall power consumption and temperatures without sacrificing any performance. So behind me you see what looks like a perfectly normal 3930K. This is a 6 core processor that's running Prime 95 with all 12 threads active. It's running at 3.5 gigahertz, totally normal. Nothing out of the ordinary until you under, well, until I tell you, I guess, that it is actually running at 0.009 volts below Intel's rated spec. Now we use, we do that using a core voltage offset, and I'll show you the difference between a core voltage offset versus setting a hard core voltage, and there's an advantage to doing it this way. And what we achieve by doing this is we save a little bit of power, particularly under load, we decrease our temperatures under load a little bit, not much, it's very, okay, it's quite insignificant on this particular CPU, but there you go. We are achieving a little bit more eco-friendliness due to the power consumption decrease. And finally, last but not least, the most important thing is that while we're not getting a ton of benefit from this, there is no performance drop. So it actually costs us nothing in terms of a trade-off in order to save that little bit of power and that little bit of heat output. Now the voltage settings are fairly simple in the BIOS. In this case we're using a gigabyte board. So all we have to do is in their MIT, which is something to do with Michigan Institution of Massachusetts, I don't know, Institute of Technology, no, not that MIT, different MIT. Uh, advanced voltage settings, sorry, my, my US geography is not very good on account of I live in Canada, so what do I know? Um, we go down to CPU core voltage control, then we go to dynamic V-Core. Now it's important to use dynamic V-Core because if you use dynamic V-Core instead of using a straight CPU V-Core, it allows the CPU to continue to use uh, all of its different power states and all of its different voltage levels depending on the load, which if you want to save power is phenomenally important. So it means that whatever voltage the CPU would be at, it just takes it that much lower. And as long as you maintain stability, you'll be fine. Now you saw us running Prime 95 within Windows, which means our CPU with our, oh sorry, 0 0.09 volt undervolt is still 100% stable. Now I recommend running Prime 95 for at least 24 hours to make sure that it actually is stable. But all we had to do was change this to normal and then you keep setting down a little bit, down a little bit, booting up into Windows, running a stability test until you reach the maximum threshold for the minimum threshold, I suppose, for what your CPU can do while maintaining the same performance level. Now you can actually underclock the CPU as well as undervolting in order to save even more power and even more heat output. Although this is usually more relevant with very low end CPUs if you're putting it in something like a media PC and you want it to run as quiet and as efficiently as possible, it is something that some people do do. Although in most cases, I would recommend just buying an energy efficient CPU in the first place or buying a lower end CPU in the first place as well. So I think the conclusion for this is pretty straightforward. There's a time and a place for undervolting and it looks like with the advancements made in performance per watt and in power consumption in general with modern processors as well as modern graphics cards, there's probably not a ton of savings left to be had. So un at idle, we actually didn't really see any improvement at all. And under load, we saw about a 10% improvement in power consumption by undervolting the CPU, which amounted to about 17 watts uh, with a full Prime 95 load. Now factoring in that almost everything you do will not load your CPU like that, you might be getting a 3%, 5% sort of improvement over what you would normally see. Now I'd like to show you guys also our newfangled OptiUPS powered uh, power measuring kit here where we're using our old uh, watt meter but with the more stable voltage output from using this online UPS we are actually able to take much more accurate and much more consistent readings so that hopefully says 163 right now yes it does which is exactly the reading that we got before now if you're interested in undervolting but you don't want to tinker around with the BIOS then it's probably also worth mentioning that ASUS has a feature called EPU which basically amounts to one touch under volting, just like they have TPU for one touch overclocking. So they're basically the same thing, just going in different directions. So if you're like, okay, I'd like to save 10 watts because I can, 
um, then go ahead and use EPU. And thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.